Motor quit working after making my third hat. I like it a lot. Absolute trash. Well made. Total waste of time and money. These reviews are so polar. Like either people are loving it, it's their favorite purchase that they've ever had in their entire life or total trash put it in the garbage, take it off the market. Like there is no in between. It's a one star or a five star, that is it. So I finally just had to break down and test it myself and it's arrived in the yarn dungeon. So we're gonna play around with this. What is up everyone? Welcome back to Alt Knot. We have a knitting machine to review today and it is claiming to be an automatic knitting machine. Okay, like just think about that for a second. If you've used Centro, Addy, like whatever brand you've used, this could be potentially a huge game changer because for the most part I like to use my 48 needle for things like beanies at like the end of the month I like to kind of de-stash right so anything that's like half a skein or even less than that I'll just throw it in this giant bin and then I'll crank out a bunch of beanies like whatever yarn I have I'll make that many beanies if I didn't actually have to crank them out there's a possibility that I could do two projects at once or like I could crochet while I'm knitting up these hats my ex expectations for it, however, are not that high because the reviews from this are all over the place, like high and low. There is no in between. People either loved it or absolutely hated it. There are quite a few red flags already. And the first one is that it doesn't come with a stitch counter. For me, it's just an absolute must. So I did purchase a stitch counter that I can put on here but I'm including that in the price. So I paid $66 for the knitting machine, $15 add on for the counter because again for me that's essential I'm never gonna count the rows easy to use 48 needles and it does have table clamps that is another thing you really have to have especially if it's electric I want to make sure that it's gonna be like on the table connected it's not gonna move around because I'm gonna imagine that that's gonna affect the tension the stitches so the more secure it is the better chance of having an actual project that we're gonna like or like coming out the way that it's supposed to to. We have a lot of stuff that just fell out here. We have the instruction book, lots of pictures, anything that involves pets. Yep. Okay. Thank you. There are really, really big pictures. That's basically all you need to pay attention to. The rest of it is like one little blurb for the setup. Ooh, this came packaged really nicely. Not only the motor, the plug-in, but also it looks like the legs. Oh, there's also a crochet hook and a yarn needle in here. And one of these, which is perfect for when I need to clean these, this size of a screwdriver. If it comes with it, it's obviously gonna work the best. But anyways, some of them that I've got before don't come with this, so I appreciate that. All right, two table cleaner. The surface space right here, it's gonna clamp on really nicely, super secure, and then we just have the spindle on the bottom there to tighten and loosen all four of the legs to attach onto. Here is the cord to plug it in. How long is this cord? Normally I like to do it on my table again because I want it to be clamped in place and I want to like move around and stuff but if the cord's not that long I might have to do it on the floor. Oh no I like it's pretty decent. It's not the longest cord in the world but I think I think it could like reach the plug-in and the top of my table. Tension guide and there is four areas for tension. Two yarn needles. Ooh, okay, and this one is like darning needle. It has that little curved edge. These are my favorite for knitting machines because when you have to pick up that stitch, it makes such a big difference for it to be curved compared to like this one that's just a straight yarn needle. These ones are my favorite. We have a crochet hook that doesn't have a size on it to finish up the projects. Couple of screws in here. Not sure how many there were supposed to be, but there's three. They were just chilling on the bottom. Two screws for the tension. What was the other one that I need it for? I'm gonna hang on to it and I'm sure I will figure it out as I go. Just from first glance, I like it a lot. I like the color of it. The black and red, obviously I'm a fan of these two color combos. The tension guide right there looks really nice. It has that guide, so the yarn has to be able to fit through there. The electronic function can be used with the adapter, so the thing that it came with 
or batteries. It doesn't contain the batteries, but you can use it on either of them. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. So like if I'm traveling with it and I don't have anywhere to plug it in, take some batteries with, but like I'm in the yarn dungeon, so I'm just gonna use this for now. Otherwise, it looks like it is AA batteries. Yeah, three AA batteries. Right here, we have the plug-in and also the on-off circular and plain knitting. We have a little light right here, which I would assume turns on as soon as all the parts are together and we plug it in. They should just twist in here pretty easily. I don't think I need to use anything else for it. Perfect. All right, next, the tension guide. There's a piece of plastic that sticks out right there. Guide that in and we have two out of the three screws that go here. I'm still confused as to where the third one goes. Maybe it's just an extra one to have on hand, which is kind of nice, I guess. That you can really feel when it's done being tightened. Sometimes it's easy to over tighten these things, but yeah, there is a definitive stop point with this. All right, we're good. I do like that this is really, really long, which means that you're gonna have a lot of options on what type of table to put it on. Here is the full setup without turning it on. And I'm actually super happy with this. Like the clamps on the table, it's, it's solid. It is not going anywhere. I did plug this in and forgot to look to see if it was on, like actually on, which it was, and it scared the crap out of me. So don't be like that before you plug this in. Put it on the off position. I am gonna leave it in the circle. I wanna do like a beanie first just to test it out. It is making a slight buzzing noise, which is kind of annoying to me. I would definitely have to have headphones on or have an audible book going or something. Otherwise, it would just be really irritating. I'm just gonna use this yarn, which I know works really well on any of my other knitting machines. So at least I'm not gonna have to like fight with the yarn. I know it should work on here. It says in the instructions to cast on once and then turn the electric part on. Okay, so just like my other beanies, cast on slowly. It feels very smooth, just starting to crank this around. So hopefully I'm not gonna have to add any oil to it or anything right away. Like it seems like it's out of the box, ready to go. All right, so here's where we're at. Put that underneath that one. Okay. Put it in the tension that's like furthest away and maybe go over one more. All right, here we go. So that buzzing noise does not go away and then there's added noise on top of it. I mean, I'm not even holding on to anything. It's just doing its thing. So far, Hasn't dropped a stitch. Nothing's getting compacted. It's actually really fun to watch too. I think the only thing, oh, there we go. We had one. It didn't drop, but it was like starting to come up on the top here. But the only thing I'm really gonna have to watch is the active yarn down here in case it gets knotted up or anything, because I can imagine that would be terrible if it was like, clustered a big knot down here and it tries to go through this that would cause some chaos oh yeah and as you can see the light does turn on as soon as you plug it in and turn it on okay here stop and start beautiful this is super fun the real test is gonna see like when it gets really long, if it starts bunching up, like what happens? Cause here, you can see it might, maybe I need to change the tension a little bit because now that more of the yarn is out of the skein, let's just try it in the second tension here. 
I might like this tension for beanies a little more than the first one. I have no idea what row we're on because there is no counter. So no idea. I'm just going to go on looks for this one. Are we tired of watching it yet? Because I could seriously watch this all day, especially with this yarn. This is great entertainment right here. Have a little tea, make a hat, or like watch the hat being made. Mmm. What was that? There was a little knot right here. And just like I thought, it just stopped the entire machine. See if it goes through. Oh, okay. So it just didn't like it in the tension guide. But up here, it went through perfectly. So I thought maybe I would have to, you know, manually do that part whenever there was a knot or like if I was attaching two pieces of yarn, maybe I would have to do it that way. But no, nope, it works up here. All right, good deal. Let's actually stop it. Okay. So when it gets really long, I just kind of fold it up like that on itself and then keep going. Put you down. Let's just stop it at this one. Where? is the start right there okay perfect this part we're just gonna cut this off let's try this darning needle out it has like a really wide opening so you can get a wide variety of yarn through it or if you have really fluffy yarn drop stitches that's pretty good two counters have just arrived this is the one that I normally get like I've used it on other jam it series but it's super cumbersome like that's why I got this other one let me just show you real quick just super big bulky like it does the job but it's a whole ordeal attaching it onto it and then you have this part which has a magnet and so every time the magnet goes around no does it not have the little piece no it's right here tiny magnet you attach it onto one of the teeth and then as you're spinning it around it goes past this but it's also very particular so you have to set it up in a way that it does go exactly across and there have been a couple of times where i've set it up and it didn't work and so I had to like redo it. Basically, it's not my favorite thing and I was looking for another alternative, which led me to this little thing, which is a 3D printed counter. And like, look how small that is. It's designed specifically for knitting machines. Like it has this little lip. It's gonna go right over the top of it. There is a tiny little magnet that I will attach onto one of the teeth and then it has some glue too. Oh, it's super glue. All right, I wasn't honestly sure how this was gonna stick on. I didn't, I wanna make sure that that magnet actually has a nice flat space. So, mm, how about that? I appreciate it that it's in this little bag too. It's really tiny, so very easily could have got lost. And it has a nice little area. This should slip like right in to the spot here. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful that is. Is there enough room? Oh, look at that. I might as well just leave it nice and close, right? Seems good enough. All right, let's try it. Flip this up for panel. Now it says in the instruction that for panel making, it's gonna stop at the 44th stitch, which is right here. So there's two white ones um before we get to the black teeth so i'm assuming it's going to be two on both sides that aren't going to catch so i'm going to start casting on number four and just kind of go from there hopefully to give it the best chance possible for making a flat panel Seems like I should just be able to turn it on. It just says to do the one row. I'm gonna try it once this way and then I might actually go back once to make sure everything catches. Oh, let's put it in the 
tension controller. There we go. Yeah, neither of those caught. So that was the right way to go. Ah, uh, drop that one. This one's still doing fine though. But yeah, this one's kind of a mess. So like I thought, maybe just running through it once or twice manually, it might help to establish the stitches. I'm actually just gonna stop and go and try and see if that works because I mean, this side is already totally falling apart. Like we didn't even catch that one section. Try this again, okay. Should be coming up to 42, 43, 44. Just do it one more time back and then I'll let it go. I feel like this is giving it the best setup possible at least. All right, clear that, not that that matters. Okay, we caught it the first round. Let's see how it does on this other side. Caught that one too. Okay, so now it's doing fine. Maybe that's just the thing. It just needs a little extra help to really get over that lip right there. So I think that's the key, doing it manually twice to really stick those stitches. That one catch to fall off. No, it looks like you caught. Okay. Like I'm happy with this so far. I feel like I definitely have to watch this a lot more than doing the circular for like beanies and things like that. This would not be quite as hands off. But again, it seems to be catching. And my row counter is working. Obviously it only counts every other row, but just know that as I'm going into a project and I'd be totally happy with it. Yeah, like all of them are caught. Okay. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this apart from it just being a sample. Just wait until it gets to 10, I guess, and then pull it off. But it looks like all of the stitches, once again, are here. That's the main thing I gotta watch for, is knots. That really wreaks havoc on this. Okay, all right, so I'm just gonna pull it off. There we go. Nothing's getting compacted. There wasn't any drop stitches, not even on the sides this time. Okay, so there we go. Panel knitting, it apparently works. I am actually annoyed by how much I like this machine. I did not think this was gonna be something I would have out in the yarn dungeon. I thought maybe every once in a while I'd pull it out because you know, it's, it's kind of fun, gimmicky type of machine. I actually really enjoy this machine though, especially when it comes to beanies. Start to finish this entire thing, 13 minutes. You cannot beat that, like you really can't. For most of the time when I'm making beanies and accessories like this, I don't want it to take a lot of time. It's just the same pattern that I've done 
over and over again. Yeah, I'm 100% gonna be using this and I will not be putting it away. Ins and outs of things that I really loved, things that I didn't particularly enjoy, starting with the one thing that is an absolute like deal breaker for me, it has to have a counter. So since it didn't come with a counter, I'm including the cost of this. So it was $66. This one was a little bit more expensive. I think it was like $21 compared to the other one that I had purchased. So in total, like that is the total price of this machine for me. I would not use it in like at all. I wouldn't pick it up if it didn't have a counter. Even still, that is a fantastic price for a circular knitting machine. And the fact that it's electronic, like add that on top of it, I still think it's a really good price. Out of the box, it was ready to go. There isn't any extra pieces though. So like the teeth here, I'm a little bit concerned that especially when you're going, you absolutely have to watch out for knots. Like that is detrimental. So a couple of the times that I wasn't really paying attention or just like snacking away, making a beanie, and there was a knot, since this part is like screwed in here, it's not going to budge. So if there's a knot on here, either this part is going to break or it's gonna make it all the way up to here and then potentially break one of the teeth or you know, just like the grinding wear and tear of it and like it's just gonna cause it to like super strain and everything. I did it, what, twice? <laughs> I didn't learn the first time. Two knots escaped me. It made a horrible noise, immediately stopped it like as soon as I could or like as soon as I caught it. Nothing has broken broke so far, but like I'm kind of feeling like that's something I'm gonna have to watch for. Other machines that I've worked with sell the teeth in like little packs, so like 10 or 12 teeth. Just the natural wear and tear of using it because of the fact that I am gonna make a lot of beanies on this, I would like to have the option to buy spare parts for it. And also this thing, like really this is the main thing that I'm concerned is going to like inevitably break. It's a totally a user error. Like I need to pay attention a little bit more to the knots coming out. So I think maybe going through or like using yarn that I know doesn't have a lot of ends to it. The circular option worked really, really well. Like you saw, I barely had to pay attention to it. There was no knots or anything like that. I basically just had to sit there to turn it on and turn it off. I did not have to worry about it at all. The panel did need a little bit of watching even though after I just like put the first two rows on I still wanted to be near it you know like I wanted to watch it drop and catch and on each side I just like maybe once I do a couple of cardigans on it I think I'll feel a little bit better letting it go and doing its own thing I still am getting used to the panel I guess I should say that I've had this a total for four days now so it hasn't really been that long but I've been playing around with it every single day doing the tube and the panel once I get going on the panel though it seems to be fine it's just those first couple of rows that it needs a little bit of extra help and honestly if that's all I have to do to it like it's still worth it to me. So I am definitely keeping this. It will be something that I use often. I can see myself using it every single week for some sort of project, especially with my scrap yarn. Like this is going to be a great tool for me to have. I can see a lot of blankets in the future. That's something that I love making on my knitting machine. Two blankets are just so, so long, or like the ones that I do, because I like them to be big, giant, squishy. I like to be totally wrapped up in it. So just throwing it on here and doing, you know, 300, 400 rows for a tube, it's gonna take no time at all. And I can literally do other things while this is going. But when it comes to de-stashing and using up little bits and pieces of yarn that I have no idea what else I'm gonna use them for, I feel like this is gonna be really beneficial for me. If you do markets and you already sell beanies or headbands, stuffies, that is another thing that I wanna try on this. So blankets and stuffies for sure. I can't say how like the wear and tear works because again, I've only had it for a few days. If you think of it this way, you can have this going just like right next to you and you already have a machine where you make beanies and headbands on it, 
basically make two for the time it normally takes to make one, that could help you out dramatically. I did really enjoy that there is an option for it to be plugged in and batteries. I definitely have had some knitting machine parties before. They're not always sitting at a table where or like near an outlet. Most of the time it's just like on the floor, chilling, hanging out. So having the option of just having the batteries to be able to place it wherever you want is really nice. Also, this could be just a fun entertainment to have at a party too, regardless of, you know, what you're actually making, because I know I enjoyed watching it, especially with yarn like this, which is like very mesmerizing to watch. The one thing I really didn't enjoy was how loud it was, but it wasn't actually the noise once it was turned on. It was when it was off, there was a ringing noise. And for whatever reason, that one got to me a little bit more. I think I was just like prepared for the noise and the clicking that it was making, but the buzzing and the ringing when it was sitting there, I found myself unplugging it when I didn't have anything actively going on there. For me, I couldn't sit there and like take my project off of the machine if it was plugged in. Like that's how bad it bothered me. So if you're sensitive to sounds, just keep that in mind with this. It definitely, there were some things that, you know, either you're gonna have to have like TV on, have a podcast going or something headphones to kind of drown that out. It's not something you're going to be able to work on quietly and you know if you're just sitting watching a movie or something with somebody else that hasn't seen the movie before you're just going to turn this on for a couple of seconds. Yeah no that's not going to happen. It's loud enough that it's very distracting to whatever else is going on in the room. So that is my opinion on this automatic knitting machine from the Jamit Universe. I am just pleasantly surprised with how everything turned out. So let me know though, if you have tried one of these, did you have a similar experience to me or was it a little closer to all of the many, many reviews that were on their actual site? Thank you for hanging out with me, testing this brand new knitting machine. I genuinely had so much fun with this one and the fact that it worked out in my favor and I love it and I wanna keep using it just made it even better. So I hope that you had fun as well. As always, if you did, don't forget to like the video and join the Ghoul Squad if you haven't done that yet. Otherwise, have a fantastically spooky rest of your day and I will see you in my next video.